Sorry, sir, these things have a habit of getting away. That's all right. Hey, wait, where's my cork? Hey, mister, you bring my cork over here. I'll give you a glass of real champagne wine. Imported from Cincinnati. Here's your cork, mister. Yeah, and here's that wine. But I'll pass in the wine, thanks. Your what? Hey, now, Jed, leave him alone. Well, I offered the man a drink. The man turned you down. Thanks anyway. Well, why is that? You got something against me? No. Or maybe Quantrail. You won't drink to Quantrail, the greatest man ever wore the old gray uniform? Or maybe you never heard of him? I heard. Are you some kind of chicken liver Yankee? The war was a long time ago, mister. Well, there's some of us ain't forgot. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. If you want to discuss politics, would you please repair to the bar? There are ladies present. No, I ain't studying politics. I'm talking patriotism. Now, what you heard on Quantrail, mister? Well, that depends on who's telling the story. I've heard some say he was a butcher. That's a lie. Please, gentlemen, you must... You ain't gonna stand there lying in your teeth about Quantrail. Listen, I know better. I rode with him. That's so. You calling me a liar again? No. Maybe Quantrail wasn't a butcher. Maybe it was the many picked that killed women and children. <laughs> We'll set a table for you in the lobby. If you wish to talk politics, that would be quite all right. You'll be doing so out here. Hey, we gotta get him, boy. Why? <laughs> Just because he messed Jed up a bit? <laughs> no, he's good. And his name is Shane.
Okay, okay. All right, now. Yeah. Get around that corner. Watch it now, easy. Easy. Make around turn. the corner, around the corner. Watch the lamp, Dan. Be careful of the lamp. Now, okay. I'm gonna get that thing home in one piece. Okay, I'll take the time. Cost me a lot of money. Go on now. Okay. Are you almost at the... Watch your big feet there, Dan. You're gonna trip. I'm being careful. I'm being careful. Right. Now, come on, down over there. Look uh, right down there. Right around this way. Come on. Be, now, watch it now. Be careful now, Dan. Easy. Oh, you being careful it's like an elephant in a ballet. <laughs> Give me my bill. I wanna know how much you're gonna cheat me. How come you charge me for three breakfasts? Your man ate two, you ate one. In the first place, he ain't my man, he's my friend. And in the second place, he needs two breakfasts because he's twice the man you are, pipsqueak. And in the third place, them eggs look like they come out of a dying pigeon and I'm only paying for two breakfasts. Ma'am, I'm afraid we must insist. I don't that... think you better insist on anything. He's right. You better give it up. Shame! <laughs> Hello, Jenny. Well, what are you doing in Cheyenne? The last I heard you well, were... I had to come in to file some land papers. Well, you ain't homesteading. In a way, I'm working for some folks out in Crossroads. They got you busted to a plow? Hard as a mule's hoof. Last time I remember, that ham was as soft as a sigh. Hmm. Come on over, say hello to Dan. Two breakfasts. Hiya, Dan. Howdy, how are you? How's it going? Right as rain. Miss Jenny is teaching me how to read. What are you doing around here, Jenny? A long way away from your spread. I came in to sell 50 head of cattle. <laughs> now, where'd you get 50 head of cattle to sell? Well, I got what you might call a Bible herd. They increase and multiply and replenish. <laughs> yeah. Last time I rode by, there wasn't even a bull on your place. She's got a steer she's lying to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shane, come on down the street where the liquor's cheaper. We buy you a drink. No, thanks, Jenny. I got to ride out of here before dawn. And when you and I get together, it usually lasts for a while. Ain't that the lovely truth, though? I won't keep you. Jenny, it's good to see you. I ain't so good to see you anymore, but it sure is nice to hear. All right, come on, let's go. Let's go, man. All right, easy now, Dan. Be careful. Come on. Now get it out there, onto the rig. Let's go on now, easy. Yes, man. Shane? I never could decide whether you look better coming or going. Mr. Shane. Not a sound. You want to discuss the war some more? No, no, you're coming with us. Why? Because we both got guns in our hands. And you ain't got nothing but a hotel key. <laughs> no, Mr. Shane, let's not be foolish. Upstairs. I don't suppose you've read Xenophon's Anabasis, even in the English translation? What do you want? My name is Major George G. Hackett. All right. Mine's Shane. I know you're recognized downstairs. That's uh, why I got you up here. I am interested, sir, in a man who can uh, disarm a gunman of some repute and commit mayhem upon him. Now, I uh, believe you were employed some several years ago in... Uh, Fernando County in West Texas, and again in the Colorados. I see a period of employ in the Big Cliff Load Mining Company is what, is what they called a security guard. That's a pleasant um, euphemism for a hired killer. At any rate, I am paying $50 a week, plus 200 in cash as an enlistment bonus. I assume that's what that clod was squandering when you laid him low. I'm sorry, but I don't take that kind of work anymore. Oh? In your case, Mr. Shane, I note uh, a gleam of intelligence which I do not discern in the others. I will make it 75 a week, sir, and that is a princely sum. It sure is. But I don't need a job. Well, sir, I'm offering you a salary that would stagger a college professor. 
If you turn it down, that's your misfortune. Good night, sir. Excuse me, Major. What are you doing here? I haven't been drinking champagne. You'd be a dead man here. I'm asking you, sir, what you are doing here. This man called me a liar, Major. You are a congenital liar. Now let him pass. I'm going to stand here while no man calls me a liar. Silence! I will not have insubordination. You were discharged. Oh, no, Major, you can't do that. I run me up a bill downstairs. I owe $100 just on a champagne Very bill. well, very well. Then you are fined two weeks' pay. Dismissed. Dismissed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Territory can never soar to the heights of its manifest and preordained destiny when the open range is a sanctuary for the banditti of the plains. Well, that's pretty highfalutin, but what's it mean, huh? What's a banditti, Tom? Thank you, man. Oh, that's Italian for outlaw. I haven't heard about too many Italians in these parts. <laughs> what's this got to do with us, Shane? Read the top of the next column. Oh, come on now, this is getting foolish here. All right, now let's see. Typical of the anarchy brought about by the passage of the Homestead Law is the appearance in Cheyenne this week of the notorious Longhorn Jenny offering her illicit bow beams for sale. <laughs> now, what's she got to do with the Homestead Law, Shane? That's the whole point, nothing. But they're trying to make it sound like she's a homesteader. Who's trying to make it sound that way? Probably the big packing companies back in Chicago. You think Riker had something to do with it? Riker had nothing to do with it. You don't know that, Shane. He's a cattleman, the same as they are. No, he's not the same as they are, Tom. He just looks like that to you because he's trying to kick you out of the valley. As far as the Cattlemen's Benevolent League is concerned, he's just a big homesteader. <laughs> you sure think he's some kind of expert in all this, Shane? I've worked with outfits like this, Harvey. I know how they operate. They put the law in one pocket and the newspapers in the other. Chicken Little. What's that supposed to mean? Run for your lives! The sky's falling! <laughs> <laughs> you agree with Harvey, Tom? Well, let's face it, Shane. You uh, run off to Cheyenne for three days and then come back with some wild story about some men from Chicago. Supposed to be cattlemen, but won't accept Riker. A little hard to swallow, isn't it? In Cheyenne, I was offered $75 a week to sign on as a hired gun. Can you swallow that? Appears like you've been working your hard, man. I might too hard, Miss Terry. They're starting to spook real easy. Well, Shane means well. Well, he might be right. But he could have heard him out. What not us left the room, ma'am. Thank you for the coffee. Yes, sir. Thanks much. Good night. Good night. You know, Shane isn't always right, honey. I think you'll find this an abominable port, but I refuse to drink the local vin de pay, which is raw whiskey. Thank you, Major. Mr. Fretwell. No, 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 thank you. Uh, teetotal, you know. Uh, teetotal. Now, Mr. Fretwell, I want you to reassure the governor no, that... No, no, he mustn't be connected with this. He doesn't even want to know I'm here. Doesn't want to know. <laughs> Naturally. The, the Cattlemen's League appreciates the governor's delicate position. You know, as a matter of fact, I even told the governor that when we no, were in Washington. No, please, we please. No, no, no. Please, don't even tell me. Don't even tell me. Well, when we were talking with some of our most distinguished legislators. As a matter of fact, Mr. Fretwell, you should be able to understand our concern. After all, our shares have recently dropped over two and one-eighth on the Chicago Exchange. Now, we can't have that, can we? Well, of course, uh, I see your point. I, I see your point. But you must realize the governor can promise you nothing, nothing. He can promise to look the other way. The governor knows nothing about this, nothing. 
Then what did he send you for? The governor knows nothing of this meeting, and I am not present. You are not present. And why are you here? Well, there's been some doubt, some doubt expressed about Mr... Uh, Major. Major Hackett's qualifications for the job to come. The thought has been put forward that maybe a man of more experience might be considered. Did the governor say this? How could he? He knows nothing about you. Ah. Dossier. Major George G. Hackett, graduate, United States Military Academy, ranked fourth overall in class. Commissioned in the infantry, United States Army, transferred to the cavalry, given a battlefield promotion, left the service at the end of the war. Why? Because I had nothing more to learn from my so-called superiors. They think that the science of war has reached its zenith. Well, they are grossly in error. Major Hackett comes to us from Pennsylvania, where he was chiefly responsible for the wiping out of the Molly Maguires and the coal mining regions there. Well, that's quite impressive, I know, but... Uh... Spit it out, man. What is it? There's been some concern voiced over the number of men you're hiring. We don't think it's enough to do the job. Against a number of ragtag farmers and ranchers? Yeah, rustlers. Oh, yes, rustlers. How many men have you? Oh, 200. 200? Right here. This lovely is worth, and I speak conservatively, about 195 men. Gentlemen, you are gazing at an innovation that will reverse every tenet held by the aging military minds of our generation. Now, it fires at a rate of 500 rounds per minute, effective range 500 yards. It is easily transported over any terrain. It kills. Now, are there other questions? I don't want to know anything about this. I'm not present. Then good night. couldn't get Joey to go to sleep. Oh? I suppose I shouldn't bother you this late. It's all right. Shane, did he really offer you that much money? Seventy-five dollars a week? Yep. Yeah. Why didn't you take it? I don't take that kind of work anymore. There must be an awful lot of jobs a man like you could have. I don't mean gunfighting, but, well, working on a railroad or, or, or something out in California. Something you could get ahead and not bury yourself on a homestead, which you don't even own. I'm not complaining. Got a place to sleep. Cooking's good. Shane, don't joke. I see Joey looking up to you as if you were his father. And I've got to know, Shane. Why do you stay here? I don't know if I can tell you that. Well, there must be a reason. Marion, what do you want me to say? I don't know. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I see a tired woman getting older and worn down. You can't wear a shirt like this, Shane. There's a, it's all torn. I'll have to mend it for you and, and wash it and... And how many times have I told you? Don't leave your wash lying around. Put it in the basket. I've got enough things to do around here without picking up after you. You don't have to worry about that $75. I've worked with outfits like that before. That's what Harvey Ball and Tom just don't understand. They can understand Riker burning down a wheat field or starting a fight outside of Grafton's. But they can't believe a company in Chicago actually planning it out, buying a newspaper in Cheyenne, bringing a writer from the New York Herald to mix up all the words, homesteader. Rustler, thief, till people just don't know the difference. 
than getting the law on their side and hiring an army of gunfighters. You won't let me be at peace one way or the other, will you, Shane? Marion, I'm talking about that Major Hackett. Well, I'm not. <laughs> oh, you've been sniffing that gas pipe in that big city hotel, Shane. Riker, Hackett's got men on a weekly payroll. So do I. Think I ought to invade Cheyenne? Look, I know about men like Hackett. I've worked for them. Now, you, you have to get together with the homesteaders. Oh, no, that's, that's thinking. That's thinking, Shane. I have to get together with the homesteaders. That makes a world of sense. <laughs> Riker, for once in your life, will you try listening? I do. I hear everything that's going on. You've just been trying to sell this deal to those mud feet, haven't you? <laughs> and they ain't buying any of it either, are they? No, they aren't. <laughs> yeah, they're just a bunch of fat chickens. And they're gonna sit on their roosts while that fox goes and knocks them off into his mouth one by one. <laughs> and that's just dandy for me. Yeah, you, know, you try to warn me that Hackett's coming through this valley? Well, no, why should I care? I'm a cattleman. And I'm gonna do just like those ancient Hebrews in Egypt. I'm gonna take the blood of a lamb and put it over my door. So the angel of death is gonna pass me right by. <laughs> I guess I made a mistake. There were two living things in here when I came in. I guess I wasn't talking to the brightest one. When will you use this thing? When we're against an opponent whose resources seem to test our mettle. What will you do now? A field exercise at first, a small sortie, you know, something small. Against a known rustler, someone without any friends, any popular support. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shane, how you go to the back house by way of Kansas City? Look, Jenny, this paper came out right after you left town, and you're the only one that's mentioned by name. Sheep dip. Jenny, this guy Hackett's hiring gunfighters all the way from Texas. Now, he's paying him good money. Maybe they're gonna rob a train. Not Major Hackett. You figure he's working for the Cattleman's Benevolent? I think so, yeah. You've been like a mosquito stinging at them for years out here. I think they're getting ready to swat. Dan! Hey, Dan! Yes, Miss Jenny? You get me down another one, you hear? Are you sure you want it? Get it! I put him up there so it's harder for me to get him down. <sighs> Didn't do too much good, did it? You can go along now, Dan. You want one, Shane? No, no thanks. <sighs> like old times, huh, Shane? <clears> hey, <throat> you remember down in Hewlett County? You come banging on the door of the house, crawling in, a bullet in your arm, bleeding all over Emma's parlor rug. <laughs> you sure could drink whiskey then. Whole pint while that horse doctor crowbarred that slug out of you. And I took you up to my bed and Emma fit to be tied. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. You ain't fudding. You figure they're coming for me? If it was me, I'd light out. Well, I got one more shipment. Howard Peterman's bringing in 30 head of cattle. I promised I'd handle it for him. I wouldn't wait. He'd be here by 10 o'clock tomorrow. I'll send him on up the line to somebody else. Funny thing, Shane. 
I've been thinking about retiring for maybe a year now. You couldn't pick a better time. Let me show you something. I keep it in here so that big lump won't wipe his boots on it or something. Here. What do you think of that? Elegant. You hope to kiss a pig it is. I got it all the way from Chicago mail order. Had Dan take the measurements. Costs $32 if it cost a cent. I've been planning this for years. I'm gonna put on this here dress. I'm gonna drive my rig down to Hewlett County, all the way to the railroad depot at Old Ponyfoot. And I'm gonna kick up the dust with my ruffle. And then I'm gonna get on an eastbound train and I'm never coming back. I'm going to get me a house in Cleveland, Ohio. One of them with yellow wood siding and, and a front porch and curtains on the window <laughs> and pansies out in front. I'll just make out like I'm a widow woman of independent income. I'm going to forget all about Miss Emma's fancy men with sour whiskey on their breath. And this place are the cattle drove in by the light of the moon and move on before dawn. I'm just gonna sit on my porch and rock and try to remember what it was like to be a little girl in a white dress and white stockings and a ribbon bow in my hair. Maybe. Maybe. I could remember what my pa's face looked like. It's been so long since I could remember what he looked like. nervous as a 16-year-old girl waiting for a bow. Soon as Howard comes with his stock, I'll clear out. Look, you take the Donaldson Creek path away from the Cheyenne Road, do you hear? Don't you worry, boy. Come noon, ain't gonna be a sign of me around here except in that burned-up old bean pot and a torn-up old coffee cover. <laughs> All right. I gotta get riding back to Crossroads. Well, pour yourself some coffee before it burns a hole in the pot. No, thanks. Miss Jenny! Miss Jenny! Miss Jenny! There, that'll be Dan. He spotted Howard coming in. Here we go. They're coming. I seen them. How many head? Ten, Howard. It's some riders and some wagons. That'll be Hackett. Dan, fetch me my rifle. Jenny, you gotta get out of here. Maybe out this window. My horse is out back. Shane, how far could I carry this sack of guts and bad liquor before some of those boys got me in rifle shot? Now, if I was you, I'd weasel out that window to get on Big Red and get out. Chances are, them saloon sweepings ain't used to a move-in target. Got another rifle? Now, you did what you could. This ain't your fight. All right, I'll use this.
surrounded. Come out with your hands up. I advise you to surrender. from me before. Point starting now. Give you room, Shane. If you got another rifle, you better give it to him. He doesn't like guns. The noise scares him. You're still as stubborn as always, ain't you? Yeah. Shane? What? You're not a bad fella. Ring up the gun! Hey, uh, Major, I, uh, I think they only got one rifle down there. That is immaterial. <laughs> Still, I ain't heard any shots faster than one man can work the bolt. I am aware of that, sir. Well, uh, then uh, why are we bringing this up, huh? Because I am in command and I gave an order. I do not wish to have my orders questioned. Do you comprehend? Uh, yes, sir, Major. Uh, we're going to go down there and uh, take that fat old woman, huh? Like she was the Alamo or something.
Dan? You better... You better go. There's not much time left. You coming too, Miss Jenny? Well, no. I got business to tend to. Yeah, I'll stay right here with you. Dan, I'm telling you, get out of here. Huh? Oh. You let her be. Don't you bother her. Dan! I don't want to hurt you, but I will if I have to. Don't make no noise. Too much. Excellent sweetbreads. Huh? Sweetbreads? Is that what I've... New cattlemen ignore the most succulent portion of the beast in pursuit of sirloins. Are you sure you wouldn't like some more? Uh, no, no, thank you. Your loss? Major, I don't want to hurry you, but I have a train to catch. Mm. And you want my uh, report for the cattlemen's benevolent league, of course. On the whole, the trial sally went off superbly. The men performed well. Or perhaps not with um, perfect military esprit, but well. What is this? The late, unlamented Longhorn Jenny. I used an exposure of three seconds with a special silver nitrate plate I had brought in all the way from Rochester. What you are looking at, sir, presages a brilliant campaign to come. But these are excellent sweetbreads. Do you really think they'll come here? I know they will. There's nothing I can do about it. Nothing. And you must convince the others. Make them see we've got to fight. Now what's the use? They won't listen to me. They've got to. Mary and I tried. You heard them. They laughed at me. It's our only chance if what you say is true. Our only chance is to load the wagon and get you and Tom and Joey out of here tonight. I can't do that. You've got to. I can't. This is my land. 
It's my home. You don't let people run you off your home, Shane. You defend. I'd rather die here than run away. That, that's what my husband would have done, and that's what I must do. You can't see that, can you? You'll lose your life, Joey's? Not give it up. Fight for it. There's a difference. All right. I'll try once more. I'll talk to them, all of them. I'll make them understand the trouble they're in. Their lives depend on it. Thank you. I... I'm glad you're here. They're not gonna stop with Jenny. You don't hire a dozen men just to hang a woman, not on a weekly salary. You think it was sort of a trial? Boy, I've been here before. Chicken Little, remember? They picked somebody that didn't have any friends or family, and nobody would stick up for Jenny. You read the newspapers. It's like they hanged a rattlesnake. Now, look here, Shane. Them newspapers said they was after rustlers, and we ain't no rustlers. As far as they're concerned, anybody that's not a member of the Cattlemen's League is a rustler. Oh, come on. Well, wait a minute. Let's hear what he has to say. Oh, Tom. Well, maybe he's got something there. Yeah. Bad dreams. Well, if he has got something, we don't want to all just turn our backs on him, do we? But just one thing, Shane. You say Hackett's got a dozen men. Well, we've got three times that many. Whether they're gunmen or not, we've got the numerical edge, a big edge. You got any answer for that? No. But a man like Hackett doesn't start a fight unless he's certain he's gonna win. Maybe he's got some more men. Maybe he's found a- Shane! I'm tired of your maybes, boy. Now, you've been yelling wolf for Lord knows how long until I got me a belly full. You're gonna have a belly full of lead if you don't do something about it. Like what? What do you want us to do? I want you to get ready. Now, you listen to me, boy. You ain't one of us. You ain't got no land. You ain't got no family. Now, you come into this valley with blood on your hands. And as far as I know, boy, you ain't changed one bit. Harvey Ball, that isn't true, and you know it. He said himself they offered him $75 a week. Maybe he didn't say no. Maybe he's here just to scare us, so we'll all do something that'll bring that there army down on top of all of us. You don't know where he's come from, and you don't know where he's going. And you don't know why he's staying here either now, do you? Harvey, you've stayed enough. And I think I'm with Harvey. Your decision. bed, Joy. Well, Grandpa keeps on snoring, and Mom has a cold, and she keeps on sniffling, so I can't go to sleep. Yeah, there's a lot of that around. Shane, could I tell you a secret? Sure. You know Billy Kikadoff, the fat one? Yeah. Well, he picked on me at school yesterday. Who won? Billy Kikadoff, fat old tub of lard. He said... He said he was going to beat me up at school today. Well, what are you going to do about it? I could run and hide. Well, a fight has a way of finding you out, Joey. Really? Always. There's only two things you can do. Either get ready for a fight, or try to figure out some way to stop it before it starts. How? Well, you could talk to the teacher, see if she'll straighten him out. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I wish I were your age, so I'd know everything. I wish I was your age. How come? So there'd be a teacher I could go to. Somebody would straighten everybody out. You go on a bit. See you in the morning. Yeah. See you then. 
Joey? Where is Shane? If you... You forgot to close the door. Ready, Joey. Shane's gone, Ma. Shane's gone. He ain't in the tack room and his horse and his saddle are gone and... Shut the door behind you, Joey. He's gone. That's no reason to let good mush get cold. He didn't even say goodbye, Mom. Where'd he go? I don't know, Joey. I just don't know. Why'd he go? I expect he had his reasons. Now, Joey, eat your breakfast. Don't let it get cold. You still offering $75 a week? You're late. Fifty. I'll take it. Joey! Joey! Honey. Joey! Joey! He's out there in the grass somewhere. Come on and finish your breakfast. You'll get over it. His own time and his own way. It's been over a week since Shane left. He's just got to learn to live with it. He's just got to live with it. Joey! 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 